think it's safe to say that most people like money. I like money. It makes my life easier when I can purchase things that I need. So by protecting my money, I can keep track of my earnings and my purchases. Money coming in my bank account and money going out of my bank account. Do we protect our data like we protect our money? The data coming into the network and the data going out of the network. We protect our money in a bank account or a wallet. We also verify its validity by checking the security features built into the dollar itself. Let's look at how we protect our data. I'm Melissa Wentz, a solutions engineer with F5. Today, I'm going to cover how we can protect our data like we protect our money. By the end of this video, you will have a better understanding how to simplify the security of your network while also providing better scalability and speed. Data encryption with SSL TLS in our browser with the lock symbol is used to enforce privacy, not security. It is a common misinterpretation that the lock symbol on the website means it is secure. The tunnel where the traffic is passed is secure, but what about the data? It could have malware hidden inside it already. Organizations are facing three major challenges today. The first challenge is encryption. Organizations have a daisy chain model for inspecting incoming and outgoing traffic on their networks. The daisy chain approach is a series of devices that are physically connected to each other in order to process traffic to access the endpoint. This process can have latency issues due to each packet being decrypted, the data inspected, and then the packet encrypted before it moves to the next device for the data to be verified. Let's look at how much latency that can cause with the computational load on each device for processing. I am going to use a locking deposit bag as an example of decrypting and encrypting the packet as it navigates through the security devices. The unlocking and locking of the deposit bag will represent the decrypting and encrypting of the packet. We will have four security devices that our packet will pass through as the data is inspected in our daisy chain example. They will be the web gateway device, the DLP ICAP device, the IDS TAP device, and the IPS next generation firewall device. The web gateway device receives the packet, decrypts it, analyzes the packet's content against the corporate policies, the content checks out, so the packet is encrypted and sent to the DLP ICAP device. The DLP ICAP device receives the packet, decrypts it, checks the data for any classification markings against the policy. The content checks out, so the packet is encrypted and sent to the IDS TAP device. The IDS TAP device receives the packet, decrypts it, analyzes the packet's content to detect vulnerability exploits, the content checks out, so the packet is encrypted and sent to the IPS Next Generation Firewall device. The IPS Next Generation Firewall device receives the packet, decrypts it, analyzes the packet's content to detect and prevent identified threats. The content checks out, so the packet is encrypted and sent to the endpoint server. Each time we had to unlock or decrypt the packet, it took time. Each time we had to lock or encrypt the packet, it took more time. This introduces increased latency and impacts performance since each device must decrypt and encrypt the traffic. The second challenge is outages. We should have a plan for outages. What if the intrusion detection system or IDS tap device fails? How does the traffic get to the IPS next generation firewall device? Maybe there's a failover daisy chain. With a single or multiple daisy chain approach, there are multiple points of failure within the chain. The third challenge is performance. What if the IPS next generation firewall device was purchased with a one gig throughput while the other devices have a 10 gig throughput? The IPS next generation firewall device will cause a bottleneck of the traffic flow. This will affect performance, capacity, usage, or oversubscription. The traditional daisy chain network design had good intentions but has multiple limitations. There is no overall awareness. It's like visiting the bank and taking your savings deposit, checking deposit, and mortgage payment to a different teller to perform each transaction. Each teller would have to look over your account and verify the information before performing the transaction. Why not take your entire transaction form 
to one teller and let them process the entire transaction. What is needed is a solution that is designed for resiliency or HA and will simplify the complexity of the network. This is where SSL Orchestrator can help. SSL Orchestrator has changed the standard SSL daisy chain approach to a more dynamic approach with the idea of symphonic orchestration. With SSLO, all the devices are unchained from their physical paths and the SSLO device is in line. SSLO will decrypt and encrypt the packet once, which decreases latency automatically. Once the traffic has been decrypted, SSLO symphonically orchestrates the flow of traffic using intelligent traffic steering mythologies. The approach simplifies the complexity of the network and establishes a single intercept point. Let's see how it works using the previous example with the locking deposit bag. Once again, the unlocking and the locking of the bag will represent the decrypting and encrypting of the packet. We will have four security devices that our packet will pass through as the device is inspected in our SSLO example. They will be the web gateway device, the DLP ICAP device, the IDS TAP device, and the IPS next generation firewall device. The SSLO device receives the packet, decrypts it, analyzes the packet's content to make a classification decision to which policy it will steer the traffic to. The decision is made, so the packet is sent to the web gateway device. The web gateway device receives the packet, analyzes the packet's content against the corporate policies. The content checks out, so the packet is sent back to the SSLO device for the next step in the policy. The DLP ICAP device is next. It receives the packet, checks the data for any classification markings against the DLP policy. The content checks out, so the packet is sent back to the SSLO device for the next step in the policy. The IDS TAP device is next. It receives the packet, analyzes the packet's content to detect vulnerability exploits. The content checks out, so the packet is sent back to the SSLO device for the next step in the policy. The IPS Next Generation Firewall device is last. It receives the packet, analyzes the packet's content to detect and prevent identified threats. The content checks out, so the packet is sent back to the SSLO device for the next step in the policy. The SSLO device encrypts the packet and sends it to the endpoint server. This time, we only had to unlock or decrypt the packet one time and lock or encrypt the packet one time. This decreased the latency and enhanced the performance significantly since the SSLO device only decrypted and encrypted the traffic once. Often, I hear about protecting the network from the traffic entering the network, but what about the traffic leaving the network? Aren't we keeping track of where we are spending our money? Wouldn't we want to keep track of where our data is going to? SSLO can handle traffic in both directions, inbound and outbound. It will perform inspection on the traffic entering and the traffic leaving the network. When we think about traffic leaving, what about inspecting the traffic that could break the user's HIPAA rights? No problem. The traffic steering policy has a service chain list that understands what type of traffic can be assigned to different service chains. A service chain list is an arbitrarily ordered list of security devices. If the traffic is going to a financial institution, the traffic can now be steered to the correct service chain list named Finance. It will bypass decryption and will only allow the traffic to run through the IPS Next Generation Firewall device. The policy rules can process the traffic based on protocol, URL filtering, source destination IP, IP reputation, to name a few. Let's talk about dynamic scaling. We want to be able to have another device ready when one goes down. SSLO can be paired with another SSLO device for high availability. It also can load balance the connections to the multiple security devices that are being actively monitored by the SSLO device. When we perform software upgrades to the SSLO device or to a security device, or if there is security device failure, we will already be prepared to actively keep traffic flowing. For example, when the IDS TAP device goes down, the policy is already aware from the SSLO device monitoring the IDS TAP device's health and is ready to send the traffic to the secondary IDS TAP device. 
This will keep the traffic going at a steady rate and will not cause any bottlenecks in the flow. Cipher diversity is a topic of conversation I have heard lately, maybe due to the adoption of TLS 1.3. SSLO is a full proxy architecture which allows for independent management of client-side and server-side ciphers and protocols. An example of that configuration would be the client-side connection can use TLS 1.3 and the server-side connection can use TLS 1.2. There are many different configurations to the ciphers and protocols that it can support. Devices, which devices will it support? SSLO has different implementations to operate with a Layer 3 device, a Layer 2 device, HTTP proxy, transparent or explicit proxy in place, DLP ICAP device, tap only, or listening device. There are many devices that it can support. With that, your financial institution has a record of your money coming in and your money going out. You also have the capability of banking software that allows you to see your transactions and different totals based on business categories of where your money was spent or saved. With SSLO, an organization will have SSL visibility into the traffic flowing through the network and will have the capability to log and report based on a wide variety of categories and to be viewed or displayed on a dashboard. My only question left is, do you protect your data like you protect your money. I'm Melissa Wentz. Thank you for joining me. <music>